Lisa, the concept of beauty is talked about by scientists, uh, particularly theoretical physicists, as a very important ingredient in what they think about and, and how they see the world. Uh, why is that? Why is beauty so important in physics? Well, I'm not sure people are looking for beauty per se. They're looking for simplicity. Um, simplicity. Somehow when things are simple, you think you understand them. So one thing we're looking for is unifying principles so that things that seem ultimately disparate are actually related, and then we feel like we have a better understanding. Um, a lot of the time, uh, people tend to think that beauty and symmetry are related, mm -hmm. um, things looking the same in every direction, but actually it's not completely, uh, if you think about it a lot of the time, it's not complete symmetry that's beautiful. It's symmetry with yeah. a little bit of a peculiarity, a little right. bit of deviation from that symmetry. And I think that's ultimately what makes physics interesting too, to have sort of unifying principles, but then ultimately little sparks that don't necessarily fall into that and to understand those and to have a beautiful theory that can explain them. In fact, a lot of the theories of the world involve broken symmetry, symmetries that are essentially preserved, things are related in various ways, but they're broken by a small amount somehow, either because it's broken at low energy or it's broken by some state of the system. So there are lots of interesting possibilities for how symmetry can describe nature. So one can overstate the role of beauty. I mean, beauty can only get us so far. Um, but we certainly want, it's certainly true that if I can present something to a colleague or even to someone who doesn't know physics and it has only a few ingredients, uh, it's simpler, people are more likely to believe it and understand it. If you have to keep adding new ingredients to explain every new phenomenon, mm. that's no longer really doing science. It's fascinating as you describe it because science then would have some of the same characteristics as art. Uh, because if you have something that's very symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical, generally it's not great art. But symmetry is very important in art. It's with those, those uh, little uh, broken symmetries or differences and odd ways of looking at things, yet maintaining a... It's a lot more interesting, isn't it? A, 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 yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, it, but it, 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 it would be very strange or maybe maybe it's the way the world works that something that we perceive on a macroscopic level as beautiful in art some of those same principles would apply in fundamental physics um it's a nice concept <clears throat> I, I think it is true that people have done art based in part on some physical principles and sometimes <clears throat> it works incredibly well i think it's a little harder to work the other way around a lot of the time physical principles sort of tie into each other i mean ultimately we do have to match reality so it, it might be some basic ideas of how we picture things that might enter into the, how we think about the world. But um, there is a big difference between art and, and science, and right. science really has to match reality. Art has to do it in some sort of conceptual abstract <laughs> level, perhaps, but um, you can have a very beautiful theory that's just wrong and, and useless and has to be thrown away. <laughs> Let's discuss symmetry and how symmetry works in physics. Well, symmetry works in many different ways in, in physics. And a lot of the time we organize our theories according to symmetry. We might organize our systems according to symmetry. Um, for example, the standard model is constructed based on a theory of forces. And the underlying theory of forces relies on the existence of symmetries um, to explain how things work. Um, it's something that's a little complicated to explain. I do explain that in my book, but it's a little <laughs> subtle. But, um, but there also are ways of um, saying we have different types of particles called leptons. Um, an electron, a mu, and a tau. Um, they all interact the same way. So to some extent, it looks like there's a symmetry. But to some extent, it looks like the symmetry is broken because those three particles have different masses. So sometimes it helps to think of things and organize them according to symmetry. But of course, at much more basic level, symmetry enters into basically every physical theory you can think of um, has some symmetry ingredient. When you think about space-time, you think about rotational symmetry, you think about translational invariance, um, the fact that something looks the same in one position as another. Um, if that's not true, you think about the fact that it's broken and what the implications of that are. So it's often useful to organize our physical theories according to symmetry principles. Both the symmetries and the broken symmetries in the different categories. Well, depending on which one works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about this term supersymmetry? Um, supersymmetry is an exotic symmetry um, that relates two different types of particles that occur in nature, bosons and fermions. Um, they differ by an internal quantum number called spin, which is like angular momentum, but not quite. And how does that translate into things that people know, like electrons? And So an electron is a fermion, for example. Um, a gauge boson, like a photon that mediates the electromagnetic force, is a boson. So there are different types of particles. And if the world is supersymmetric, for every photon, there's a partner photon. So for every boson pho photon, there should be a partner photino. 
yeah. a fermionic particle. For every fermion, there would be a fermion. So there's a scalar partner of a fermion. So this would be some underlying symmetry um, that extends space-time symmetry ideas in our universe. This is totally theoretical at this point. We've never at this seen point it's a theoretical. Fotino. A lot of people believe it exists, but we certainly haven't seen experimental evidence yet. And why do they believe it exists? What, what does it do for our current theories that would push it to the next well, stage? People believe it for various reasons. Some people believe it based on beauty. They say it's some idea that's so, <laughs> this nice, this symmetry, this nice, that could underlie nature should be there. Um, some people believe it because it seems to be necessary for string theories that can describe the world. Um, some people believe it because it helps explain the weakness of gravity. So there are various reasons people mm. think about this. And do you think that's a... Um, uh, uh, a, a fruitful direction for research to, to use principles of symmetry or supersymmetry or broken symmetry? To um, absolutely. I mean, one of the important things at this point is that we don't know what we're going to see in experiments in the future, and they're very difficult experiments. So one reason you want to be thinking about these is to know what are the various possibilities for what can appear. And by thinking about what the symmetries can be, what the models, what the ideas can be, we come up with different ideas for what we can see in the future. And so this, this principle that we sort of take from our ma macroscopic lives of, of beauty and, uh, and symmetry is an important thing to use in our physical theories as well. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice uh, translation from our macroscopic way of living to, to, to investigating fundamental physics. I mean, Basically, we're all human beings. We all think about the world. There are guiding principles in physics. There are guiding principles in how we think about the world. And to some extent, they overlap. And to some extent, we built theories based on the ideas we've had already. So symmetries have entered before. They're likely to enter in the future. But we have sort of basic ingredients that go into model building that we can put together to try to see if there are other ways. But and new ideas often will also organize themselves according to symmetry principles.